Hello and a very warm welcome to this video about the brand new plugin format Clap that was announced by Bitwig and UE some days ago on the 15th of June of 2022. And I want to talk about what is it all about and what can you expect from this new um, format in towns. But let's get started. So there's a new um, plugin in town that is called CLEP and CLEP means Clever Audio Plugin. Um, this uh, plugin was announced by Bitwig and Yuhi that were the driver of this uh, new development. And uh, I want to talk about what does this mean for us as a user of plugins. And um, there are some features that were announced that are, is just the beginning of a new era of features. And one of the most interesting uh, feature is, for example, the multi-core, multi-threading feature of this um, plugin architecture. So um, if companies start developing those plugins, multi-threading is in its core included so that every um, clap plugin uh, has the possibility to use multiple cores, multiple CPUs. Um, for sure, the DAW um, company says to have to implement all those things because you can't read a plugin where you don't have support for. But I hope a lot of companies will um, support that. And I will come later to that um, uh, topic again, where, it, uh, where it's all about the um, uh, industry standard and so on. So another feature that is uh, that was announced was the voice polyphony that is uh, like that is something where you can modulate a voice or per note so that if you play um, a, if you play chords you for example just uh, can modulate not only the filter for all three notes at the same time so they all sound the same you can modulate for every for each note you play even if you uh, um, even if you press it shortly after each other, you, you have a different modulation or different um, envelope or, or whatever where what you can use for those notes uh, independently. This, this is a big um, a step for modulation because this is something where you can create lots of movement in sounds and we all know movement in sound is always a really nice and very interesting thing. Um, so this could be really a great, a great start for this plugin. And uh, Jürgen Moosgraber called uh, only this one like it's like MPE on steroids. And I think this is the best description you can give for such things. And uh, maybe it could be um, as well another feature, for example, if you use an arpeggiator, so every time you press a chord, um, the new chord gets its own arpeggiator working on the on this chord, for example, on each note or whatever you, you do with that. So there are a lot of possibilities out there only with the voice polyphony, so or the note polyphony ongoing, what you uh, sometimes already know from MPE controllers or MPE synthesizers, where you, for example, put your fingers on, on um, the keys and you uh, can move your fingers independently in, in completely different directions to modify the sound for that note you are uh, pressing down the key. So one note goes up, one note go goes down and the other note you maybe um, add some distortion to it. So that's a really nice, nice feature. Then there are some uh, another um, uh, feature like the uh, relative modulation. So um, for example, if you modulate something with, for example, something like uh, such a modulator or um, um, you can think of automa automations and, and such, it uh, could be possible that you still can move your filter, for example, if you modulate the filter, that you can still move the filter and all the modulations just going always on that position where the filter is already in, in that or where the filter is um, currently in that position. So this could be a really, really nice feature as well. 
And another thing that is um, called as a feature, all the modulations you can do on your parameters, um, they are sample accurate. So that means, um, sample accurate, accurate means that the um, uh, modulation could be very fast. So it goes into um, audio rate and audio rate means that your ear can't uh, catch the single modulation. So if you go with a filter or with a, um, with the volume you hear like going up and down and if it gets faster you you can't uh, um, differentiate it between those up and downs and at one point you just hear only like a pitch and if the um, uh, uh, audio rate goes faster the pitch increases because higher frequency higher pitches and lower frequency lower uh, pitches so this could be a really nice feature the clap format is or has also integrated or is built or let's say its architecture is built so it it's open for midi dot uh, 2 dot O and MPE anyways, so uh, the team around the uh, CLAP format, and this is not a team from a company, even if uh, Patrick and you, he announced it. This is a team from a lot of different um, developers, maybe from open source, maybe from companies, um, maybe from the music industry, maybe from the gaming industry, maybe from some completely other industry. Um, because uh, if you think uh, which products has already audio integrated, like video conferencing, for example, telephone or whatever, um, everybody is invited to work on this um, industry standard that was announced. So um, this is very um, often. Another feature we know already from uh, Bitwig is something called voice stacking. And voice stacking is nothing else that you c you just uh, stack several uh, synthesizers, same synthesizers over each other, like you would do if you um, take this track and just duplicate that. So you had four uh, polys polysons um, playing at the same time, and a lot of DAWs or maybe all uh, do have some containers or devices or techniques where you can uh, stack those things not in different tracks but you could in Bitwig is it's um, control G to, to group it so now I have a, a group uh, instrument um, a layer container and in here I can duplicate this polysynth and now I can uh, dial in some completely different values so I have my original um, configured polysynth here I have a slightly changed polysynth with um, for example I don't know like completely different things and here another one for example I don't know something like this and th these uh, polysynths these four instances are for instance are playing at the same time to this clip so this is the advantage to be able to stack them in one device lane so you don't have to uh, copy the the clips when you did some changes in all the other tracks okay let's make that original again and Bitwig um, uh, did one step more so you can stack all those um, polysons so if I increase this number I did a video about that if you increase this number there are virtually like in this case three polysons and you have here a modulator where you can modulate all those uh, parameters and you can think about uh, can think of that like uh, unison where you dial in some more voices like this, like six voices, and now you detune your voices um, with this um, uh, with this parameter, with this style. This is nearly the same. And now with uh, Clap, uh, you are able to integrate, or uh, companies are integrate, um, plugin developers are able to integrate this uh, voice stacking directly in their um, plugins. So if the developing clap plugins, it's already in there, they just have to activate it. So the plugin can work with it or the DAW and the plugin can work with it. That's a very powerful feature. And the last um, 
ja, Feature, uh, big feature at the moment is um, everything about the metadata. And metadata, this means like um, you know that um, you uh, every synthesizer or every device you load in effect or whatever has presets or most of them has presets. So if you want to load the presets and most of the times you have to load your plugin. In your plugin you have to open your preset browser and in your preset browser you can select all the plugins. But every DAW has a, a browser as well and then those browsers are um, often the presets and on some plugins you have the presets and for some plugins you don't have the presets. So it's always like, yeah, do I have it? Have I, do I have to open all my plugins to see um, and to search um, the presets I want to? and then Maybe I only remember the, the preset name, but I don't remember which plugin this was because a lot of people has so many sins. And if you if you fell uh, fall in love with a uh, with a preset, some most of the time you remember the synth it is in, but sometimes you think, oh, where was this preset? And um, the metadata is or the the function the metadata function of a clap is that. Um, all those metadata, for example, presets or samples or some other stuff there that are in the in the um, plugins, can be read without loading the plugin. So your DAW has it has a much more easier life to read all those um, uh, data, and you as a, a user, <laughs> you have a far more overview about all the presets, about all the samples, about everything you can imagine what what is now spread all over plugins and DAWs and I don't know where. Um, it's much more easier to search for things. It's uh, You have a better overview about everything and the DAWs are really um, in a better shape to read all those metadata and collect them all together. And now two topics that are normally not in the view of, of uh, users like us, but they are very important in, in, in several ways. One is the licensing. CLEP is licensed with an open source license, with, an, with the MIT license, and that means, in, in short, that everybody can uh, develop uh, a CLEP plugin because the MIT license says you are allowed no, and nobody can take it away from you. With the actual licenses like a VST or AU from Apple, it's like yeah, you you have to apply for developing the the plugin with VST. Normally, you get a, a license, but you have to apply for that license. With Apple, you have apply as well. And if you re want to release a plugin, there are some things you have to deliver for uh, that you can um, offer an official um, audio unit plugin for Apple. With VST3, if you have the license, you can offer a plugin, but in those um, license agreements, there are some paragraphs that have some um, things in it that makes a little bit, um, let's say, that's a little bit insecurity because all of those licenses have a paragraph in there where the uh, license giver can take away the license from you. So imagine if you if you're a plugin developer, um, you're developing a plugin, you get the license, you you sell your your plugins, and at one time, uh, one point in time, there's an investor that says, "Okay, hmm, I bought this VSD, the Steinberg uh, company, who uh, gave all those um, licenses away, and uh, your plugin is just something that uh, um, um, conflicts with one of our plugins because we do nearly the same plugin, but we want to sell them and we want to stop to sell you." Uh, want you to stop we want you to stop selling your plugin so they can just remove uh, your license from you and then you're not allowed uh, by law to sell your plugins that could happen that never as I know that never happens in past but there are those paragraphs and this is a little bit uh, insecurity for the developers 
And for you as a user, this is as well a big uh, insecurity because, you know, you have some plugins you really love and they are very important for your workflow, for your production and everything. And even if it's, if it's a little little uh, small company who uh, who are doing who is doing this plugin, um, you rely on this plugin. A lot of your productions relying on this plugin. So and now, if this happens, if the uh, license um, giver is taking away the license from the plugin developer, then you lost your plugin too. Maybe you can use it like. I don't know if it's legal or illegal. I don't know. Maybe you, you bought it at a time where it was legal, so it should be legal as well, but you won't get any update. And maybe, um, I don't know about so much about law, but it could be possible that um, that the DAW uh, um, developer are forced to deny loading such plugins. There are so many situations that could happen, you know, um, hopefully it, it never won't be the uh, this case but um, with an with a new license from the clap format the MIT open source license this is a situation that can't happen anymore so this is a obstacle just thrown away or it isn't there anymore so the, there's a, a, a security for the um, for the development, and there's a big security for um, us as users as well. And this is very important, even if you don't think much about that. And um, the other big thing we normally don't think so much about that is industry standards. Um, there is something like an industry standard with VST and AU or uh, audio unit and some other open uh, source formats like um, LV2. But um, apart from the open source standards, these uh, other standards are held by companies. So in an industry is um, a conglomeration of all companies and not just one company is telling you what to do. Uh, for example, take just um, the paper size. In uh, Europe, we have uh, the uh, DEAN norm. In America, they are letter format, as far as I know. And uh, just imagine how printers would look like if we don't have those uh, inter industry standards. So printer would be much bigger, for example. Um, and every paper you sell this like an adventure. Is it big enough? Is it too small? I don't know. There's some, yeah, just cut some papers and sell it or, <laughs> or I don't know, something like that. Or for example, more in a technical way, like, okay, this was technical too, but more in a technical way is the USB standard. There's USB 1, 2, 3, um, there's USB-C, there's USB Thunderbolt, there's Lightning, the Apple standard. Then you have the diff different connectors. Okay, that's, um, that could be normal, but don't why why we have to have two different connectors on both sides you know why why should we have that doesn't make sense why are there more different connectors out there for the same standard then we have uh, like in the in the cabling there are completely different standards so if you for example bought a USB cable 2 uh, there in the cable itself there are different standards and uh, you, you never know, even not on the package, uh, there's an info about that and so on. You can read that all on on, um, on Wikipedia about those standards or HDMI is the same thing. There are different standards like 1.3, 1.4, 1.5 and the cable, the same chaos at the end. So you have different cables with different uh, possibilities uh, and, and different feature sets, even if the standard says, yeah, 1.5 or 1.4 is this and that. but there are different cables out there and uh, different connectors as well, the mini, the, the normal size and so on. And this is a, a, a big hassle and a big problem for industry and for the user as well. How many USB cables uh, did you buy or did you get when you're buying your, your smartphones? But OK, let's go. I think you understood the importance of an uh, of an of an uh, industry standard. And that is very important uh, because if there's only one, companies can just produce one thing.
thing with their, all their features packed in there and their real reliability and everything that makes a product really, really good and not hassling with like, yeah, um, the hardware and the connectors and the cables and, and such stuff. And for us as uh, users as well, for example, the USB, we know, okay, I buy USB, I buy this cable and that's it. No hassle around like, oh, is it this standard, that standard, what color has this and such. It's just one standard and we can uh, rely on that. And that's very important. So the last topic I have is, um, a very important topic as well because of all the uh, previous topics uh, I talked about and the industry standard, there's no industry standard when the industry doesn't use it as a standard or doesn't uh, announce it as standard or um, how do you say, agree on this standard. So Bitwig and you, he announced this uh, plugin format and um, they worked with a lot of different developers of different companies from the music industry, uh, like uh, uh, DAW developers or plugin developers with uh, the classic software industry uh, for software programs on computers, smartphones and tablets and so on. And um, as well and this is a uh, really a big thing with the gaming industry so um there are names out there like bitwig you for example with uh, diva hive mfm ace and so on and you can download uh, some uh, beta versions uh, from uh, these uh, you he um plugins the link is in my blog article i put down there it's in german but you can use uh, deeple or something else to translate it and down uh, on the on the end of the article there are some uh, links mostly uh, going to english speaking sites so you're safe <laughs> and then there are some companies that are looking at this standard maybe they're integrated in integrating them right now and they're experimenting with it like names like aturia avid with pro tools the cable guys with shaper box 2 for example then Corcos with reaper fabfilter with their pro q pro r product series for example image line that are producing fl studio presonos that are uh, making studio one then tal software who, who are doing really great uh, plugins like the tal uno lx for example then valhalla dsp with their supermassive reverb then projects like VCV Rec, Vital Audio, then um, companies like uh, Transfer, Xfair Records with Serum and LFO Tool, you all know that. The Search Team with uh, Search XT, one of the greatest open source uh, synthesizers out there. And the last company I mentioned is Epic Games. And Epic Games is a, a big player in the gaming market. And uh, if you are into gaming a little bit, you normally know the name Unreal Engine. Um, they did a, a, a game series like the Unreal Tournaments years, years ago, decades ago. <laughs> and um, from those uh, games, they developed the Unreal Engine that is a really big thing on computers and gaming consoles, for example. And there are even some more um, companies out there, not not by name, but uh, you could imagine that they are interested in using effects, using sound generators, generators or such, like in in cars, in electro cars, for example, in uh, smartphones, for example, just for uh, doing, for example, ambisonic things or surround things. Um, there are um, a project extensions for uh, CLAP that are using uh, surround and binaural uh, stuff. Or, for example, the Choose um, framework has a, a CLAP Choose extension and so on and so forth. You can all read that down the, uh, the links that are posted in my um, blog article. So now let's let's go and do some um, sound examples. So I have here just from Bitwig um, a polysynth, and this polysynth you see has here a voice stacking off at the moment, and I have a clip on here, and in this clip they are playing three notes a little bit after each other, and normally you would hear something like this.
And as you can see, I modulate with the mouse the filter from all uh, nodes at the same time. So I could do and go and modulate those filter not with a mouse. I use just an envelope or in this case an LFO. And this is the same results as if I would move that with a mouse. So, and now the big part is I um, modulate each voice separately with an own um, a filter modulation. So if I start that right now, you hear every note is uh, modulated uh, separately with an, its own filter modulation. And I could go further and just uh, uh, modulate the panning over here that turns green when I go over this modulation point or arrow and now this thing gets really complex always starting in the middle and then going left right with the filter modulation for every note <laughs> it's like hypnotic don't fall in hypnosis so this um, brings some movement in the sound that is really interesting and you, you can just um, use all these sound design and uh, arranging in a really more complex way but with an e easy approach you could do that um, before as well so you have to maybe put several instances of your synthesizer or you have to just uh, play your song then bounce it down and then uh, change the values bounce that down and then you can play that all at the same times but this um, speeds up your workflow be uh, because you can put that all in there and fiddle around until it's really nice so this is more like a playful um, way to create new sounds and this is really um, awesome because if you are a little time in uh, music production you know that sometimes achieving some really complex ideas is a bit difficult and this is one way to ease those steps really good so let's go to other plugins like for example the search plugin and i type in here and as you see if i type it in here this is the clap symbol for your uh, for example for your search plugin and this is the vst symbol i don't know this three stripes um, and um, i have two at this point because i'm working on linux and there's a system installation of uh, search and there is um, uh, nightly built a beta uh, version of a search in my home um, directory so I load this search or I have loaded it already and prepared it so you can uh, listen to that and this is the normal search uh, this can be that there is a crash or something because everything is beta even uh, bitig is beta but um, normally it's very stable with the clap plugins itself they are heavily beta maybe there are alpha um, versions of that but it's still very interesting if you don't uh, stress them too much they work uh, reliable reliably so if i now change uh, this again to my three notes clip and normally if i play the um the search right now so there's a sawtooth with a cutoff and the same with the polysynth so i can modulate that with the mouse or with the other modulator with an adsr envelope or with an automation and now i can activate the filter cutoff for each separate note like in the polysynth and you see all those notes running here 
And what I did additional here, I um, created another f uh, filter modulation, the same, but not with every note. I used all notes. So um, it's just doing this for me for the whole modulation. And the per voice or per note modulation is just on top of that. So this is a relative movement on here. So if I play that right now, so it goes down, closing the filter, opening the filter up. You could achieve that uh, formally when, uh, with uh, modulating one um, modulator, modulating the other, that was possible, but this is a more easy approach to modulate such things at the end. And um, this is, um, for example, for the search synthesizer, and the search synthesizer already integrated <coughs> the voice stacking feature. So I, there we're playing right now five uh, different um, searches at the moment and I can switch it off. Then you will hear it. It's a little bit um, not that loud, more silent. I can just put there more, put um, more searches out, uh, on that instance for example. So that's the search and uh, for sure, for sure, there is a hive and uh, with the hive I'm doing nearly the same. There's the hive and now I put again these notes and the same thing like um, filtering all uh, notes at the same time, like the classical way. You see the filter is working here and you hear all the notes at the same time filtering. So, and what I did here, just using the filter because it's so easy to hear um, every single voice. And you can really beautiful see that in Bitwig, the each note or each voice where it is on the modulation level. And I can just turn this knob around and change the absolute um, filter cutoff. And on this absolute uh, filter cutoff location, the modulation is going up and down here. Now I can uh, complex this with um, modulating each voice in the panning. For example, I switch off the panning, for example, because I used now the, the unison with the width um, a parameter. And now I, I um, configured that every voice should come out from the middle and going to the outside, like a, like a flower that opening that is opening. So now you have the filter modulation and this from mono or from the center to the side movement. So and this is made with an LFO, so it's just circles uh, coming back to the middle and going um, outside. But you, for example, you, can, you could just use a ramp or an ADS air, uh, uh, ADSR curve uh, envelope or some other envelopes or, or modulating uh, like an MSEC or whatever to just say, okay, every time a node starts, it starts in the middle, then it goes outside and never come back, for example. 
or you, you say the other way around, it starts in the outside and just comes back to the middle. This makes, this creates so much movement with so little effort and, and uh, this, this improves your workflow so very much. This is unbelievable, this is really awesome to see what this plugin format has, um, what capability uh, this plugin format has. And at, at least uh, Odin 2 synthesizer, which is really a great uh, synthesizer, there's a clap um, format as well, or clap yeah, uh, clap plugin as well. Um, you you can't um, you can't modulate the notes, uh, the the uh, every note or every voice right now. But this plugin format uses all cores. So Odin is a very very powerful synthesizer with a lot of different synthesis synthesis here. Um, really great on. Uh, uh, chip tune things or chip draw speed draw or some stuff it's really great synthesizer but it's very um, uh, resource hungry but with the clap only just compiled with clap you um, you can use all your computer's power not just one CPU and that's a really great thing so even if they if the um, if the de de developers doesn't integrate all those single voice things there's um, already an advantage just to compile a, a clap format plugin. <laughs> okay, there was there was a crash, but this is everything. All is beta at right at the moment. So if you if you and this is a good uh, topic as well. If you're interested, just use those things. Expect crashes. Maybe don't do that with your production um, environment, um, but uh, use all those plugins if you are able to. If you're using Bitwing right now, or if you're using using, I think Q Tractor. Young Moskava said Q, Q Tractor has this, or, or should have this, or he heard he had uh, Q Tractor have this, or if any other um, DAW announced that it's uh, integrated clap, use all those plugins and help the developers to um, uh, find all the bugs and bring some really nice and good plugins on the market. So um, it's really awesome. I can only repeat myself right now. And maybe you get a clue why this uh, plugin format is so great and why I think this is the future of um, audio plugins or DAW plugins for not only the music industry, um, as well for the gaming industry, for embedded, for automotive or whatever. Everything that makes some sound, <laughs> makes some noise, like Jürgen Moskava always says. Um, uh, everything that makes noise and there are like electro cars and and all those stuff uh, need some industry standard and need some uh, uh, security uh, some legal security to develop things and this whole project project is uh, like uh, built up like an open source project so you can if you want to and you're able to you can um, uh, see and check the the source code if it's good and if you want to add or if you're able to add something you can join um, these groups and bring it in so you can discuss if this is a good thing and maybe your idea will be integrated in in this whole standard you never know so um, and if you're just an end user like me uh, yeah, use it and be happy that you <laughs> that you can use your computer some uh, some more years without buying uh, without buying new CPUs and new GPUs and stuff. And uh, yeah, I, I think this is really really great step into the future. So I would be very happy if you tell me in the comments um, what you think about that. Maybe your ideas. Maybe go completely crazy and just write you whoa it would be very nice if you could like that because there are actually some in the community people out there they're doing really crazy stuff with this clap what maybe the developers even not think about or thought about and uh, yeah maybe you <laughs> you are uh, using bitwig and you can test it right now or 
let me know if your DAW um, vendor are integrated in it right now and you are uh, using that. Um, it would be very interesting. And for sure, um, subscribe, like, and share my videos. It, this always helps me to uh, do this um, content. I like to do that, but sometimes it's um, very nice if you get some feedback from people that say, hey, Okay, I liked it. There was one or two infos um, that helped me or that were very interesting or everything you say is interesting. Maybe not. Or you just like listen to podcasts and such and this is not annoying you maybe as well. So leave me a comment. Give me some feedback. It, I um, would be very happy about that. So and that's the end now. So I hope I see you soon. Stay healthy. Yeah. And see you. Ciao, ciao.